today we're going to create an Android app in Kotlin that uses socket IO connection to connect to a Node.js server. I'm not sure if you saw this video on YouTube or you looked at my article, but uh, in this YouTube video, I'll have a link to this article. And this article has um, the codes that we need for this uh, project. And um, what essentially what this article does is it gives like the theory on how to connect socket IO to your Android device. But um, to make it easier, I'm going to make this video where it's going to show a practical app, which is just a counter app that counts and to show it both working together. And that's what this video's purpose is for. So at the end of the video, what we're going to get is we're going to get this app to synchronize together. Right now, you see I'm clicking on this button and it's just doing six, seven, eight, nine, ten of nine. And you see that it's not synchronized together. But if we do connect it to the server, whenever I click 9, 10, it should update on the other device and vice versa. So that's what we're going to be doing today. And I don't think there's an, anything else I have to say. So let's actually get started in installing the stuff we need. First thing we need to install is a uh, Node.js. And I'm assuming that you have some prior knowledge with Node.js or else you're going to have some hard time understanding what I'm going to go over as this is not like a beginner's tutorial. That is also true for Android Studios in Kotlin. But once Node.js is installed, the IDE I'm using right here is Visual Studios. All I did is I just created a folder and I put the server.js file and I, you can just copy and paste this code. I, I will have my link to my GitHub repository and you can, if you're lost or something, you could just copy and paste this code. I wouldn't recommend it, but it's an option. But uh, in short, uh, just a brief explanation of what the server does is it's going to connect to localhost 300, 3000, my bad. And um, when a socket user connects, it's going to uh, print it out on the terminal uh, and it's going to say new socket connection and it's going to just put the socket ID. And whenever a client or your Android device sends an event called counter to the server, it's going to do count plus plus. It's going to increment that. The base value of count is going to be zero, but as it increments, it's going to go one, two, three, four. After it increments, it's going to admit to all clients under the name of the event counter. It's going to admit the uh, the value of the variable if it's five, six, seven, eight, whatever the case is. But yes, that's what's going to happen. Now uh, I'm going to um, help you start up your server. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to open up terminal. If you have a MacBook, you could do Command J. It's a fast shortcut. You're going to do npm init. Uh, if this, if you get an error or something like cannot found or something like that, that means that Node.js is not properly installed. I would try getting that fixed or else you wouldn't be able to continue with the process. But if you're good, you just continue return, 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 or enter, enter, enter. And great. Now we're, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to install some of these dependencies. So the first dependency we're going to have to install is npm i express. So it's going to install that. We're going to do npm i socket.io. And the last one is npm i fs. I'm not sure, but I think fs is already pre installed, but either way, let's just install it in case. Once that's done, I'm just going to, uh, yes, once that's done, we can run our node.js server. So you're just going to write node server.js. When you click on that, the server is running. So we can test it out by going to our local host and pressing enter. And this, even though this cannot get, doesn't sound good, this is good. Our server is running because if we don't have, if the server isn't running, I'm going to, the way I cancel the server is by just doing control C. Uh, you can see if the server is not running, oh, that is not what I meant to do local host. Okay. If the server is not running, you'll get something like this. So that was good news when it said cannot get. Uh, I'm just going to clear this up. So no, clear. Okay. Apart from that, now that we have the server ready, we can actually go into the Android application. Uh, I did, I created a couple of stuff in the application. It's literally just an activity main and main activity. All I did is I created a text view, one text view and one button. The button, if it's clicked, it should just um, update the text view. So if you go to the logic, uh, this is what I called. This is the count. This is going to be the button. This is going to be the text view. And and I created a global variable called counter. And essentially, 
whenever the counter button is clicked, it's going to increment the uh, global variable and it's going to change that text view. And it's going to display that text view right over here, which you got, which everyone saw in the application. All right. So now that you understand what I've done in the Android app, let's actually install the stuff we need as if you were in a new application, I'm going to install the stuff we need to get socket IO to connect. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to build Gradle and we're going to need to install this right over here. So uh, don't worry if you look into the article, I'll have this code right over there. So you can just copy and paste it. It'll be in the article or also you can find it in my GitHub. But yeah. And once you do that, like I, you'll see sync now and you just, oh, sorry. And once you press sync now, uh, it should download the in libraries we need. Second thing we're going to do is we need to go into Android manifest and we're going to, and you'll also find this in the article. We're going to need to give user permission for internet access. And, uh, huh. yes, we're going to need to do that. And, uh, we're also need to give use clear text traffic we're going to need to add that right over here. If you don't add this, you would not be able to create a socket eye connection. So you make sure you follow these steps correctly. Now that that's done, we can now, okay, I think I made a mistake actually. I don't think there's a W, w here. Make sure that it should just be Android permission dot internet. I... Good thing I caught that mistake. That, that would have been wrong. That would have caused an error. But okay, now that Android manifest is done, now let's go into the um, the logic. So how are we going to connect socket IO to this? So actually, sorry, I jumped the gun. We're going to have to create a singleton class. The reason why we're going to have to create a singleton class is because um, Right now, if you create a socket instance in an activity and you go, if you try going to another activity, it will disconnect and we don't want that. So by using a singleton class, essentially we're creating a static class, a static object that will never disconnect. So let me, let me create that right now. So just like in the article, I'm going to name it socket handler. And you can just copy and paste it from the, um, from the article uh, right over here. And yeah, so perfect. Now that we have this, I, ju I just, I'm gonna do the same thing to speed up the, how long this video is. I wanna make it as short as possible. But um, why did I put HTTP 10.0.2 or like whatever I wrote here? Uh, the reason why I put that is because not unlike web and like even iOS, when you're trying to connect socket IO, uh, socket connection to local host, you cannot write local host because uh, that's going to connect to the Android emulators local host. If you want to connect it to your laptops, like the laptop that you're like you're in that laptop, you have an Android emulator, you're going to need to put this because if you do local host, it will not work. I'm just want to tell you ahead so that you don't make that mistake that I did. And yeah. Uh, essentially, all you're going to do is you're, this set socket is going to set it the the socket to this URL, and then this is a way of getting it. The reason why I wrote synchronized is synchronized is the way to keep it static so that when you're going traversing through other activities, the socket won't disconnect. And in this application, you won't see us going to another activity, but it is very important that you do it this way or else your socket will disconnect. But apart from that, I think we can actually now connect our socket. So the first thing you're going to write is you're going to write socket, the name of the, the object class, socket handler dot set socket. I'm going to have to write that the first time. Then we're going to have to do val m socket. Uh, and we're going to have to get that socket. So we're going to do socket handler.get socket and then we're going to just have to connect to the server so socket.connect okay perfect now that that's done now that this if this works good now that we've connected to the server in this activity 
what we're going to do is we're going to actually remove this variable global variable because uh, that global variable is going to exist in the server and we don't need that here. So let's just remove that. And what we're going to do is when the button is clicked, we're going to set an event msocket.admit. So this is how you're going to send it. You're going to have the name of the event and I'm not sure what I called it. What did I call it? I called it counter. Okay. So we're going to admit counter. And uh, yes, we're just going to admit counter to the server so that whenever the button is clicked, the server will receive it and it'll proceed with these actions. The second thing we're going to need to do is we're going to have to, um, we're going to have to, I, I'm going to remove this line a piece of code. We're going to have to get the socket. We're going to have to receive the data. So let's write that right now. And the way, and I called that event counter too. Okay. So we're going to receive the event. Um, arcs, I believe. I'm going to write this. You'll find this code in the server. If you're, if you feel ever lost, you can always find it in the server. We're going to make sure that this is not no, whatever data we're receiving is not null. That will cause issues. So args zero doesn't equal null. And um, then we're going to make our counter equal to args zero. No, no, not all zero. Okay. Now that that's done. Um, I'm going to also write as int, but if you're receiving from the server, if you're re receiving a string, you could write string or like a float, you can write float, uh, or if it, maybe even an object, I would just not, I wouldn't write as or anything. I'll just leave it like this. But as we know, we're receiving an integer. I'm just going to write int. Okay. Now that that's done, uh, one thing you need to make sure is that you need to, whatever you're going to do, you're going to have to run on, you're going to have to put run on UI thread. And then you're gonna have to do your code, like any action you wanna do. You shouldn't do it here. Like apart from logging, like log.i, and then you make like a logging stuff. Uh, everything else you need to do is, you need to run it over here because if you don't do that, it might cause your application to crash. I'm not sure why, but you have to run it under run on UI thread. But uh, the d data we're gonna be receiving is gonna be the counter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make count text view the text view, I'm going to do and make that text equals to counter this variable right over here. And uh, the reason why we're getting an error is because I believe it needs, to, it's a integer and we need to convert it to, yeah, to a string. Perfect. So let's just do that. Oh, to a string. Okay. Now that this is all done, I'm going to run on multiple devices. Let's actually see if we have this working. So let's run it. Let's go to our Android emulators. Nope. Okay, that did not go Android emulator. Okay, here. And let's see if this actually works. Okay, now the both the emulators are up to date and we've got the updated versions of the app. Okay. Now let's actually test it out and see if it works. Um it's not working. Uh what did I mess up? Um, oh, wait, maybe it's, oh, okay. <laughs> I forgot to run the server. That's, please don't make the same mistake I did. And, uh, perfect. Okay, two connections. So it looks like we're going to have some good news. Okay, I think I see it. Yeah. Okay. So congratulations on making your first Android socket IO connection in Kotlin. You can see that it's working and, um, yeah, like the great thing with socket connections is you can connect you can make a multi-platform. You can connect it on the web. You can connect it on iOS. You can connect it on even Java GUI. Like I, I've done all of those and, um, that's the great thing. So you can make some amazing cross-platform multiplayer games, but um, I'm going to keep that little clip of me flopping and not putting the ser uh, running the server because you can see that we all make, we can make some tiny mistakes and it just won't run. So servers are very, very 
particular what about stuff. Like for example, if I just wrote count this, this would like break the game. Like it would, I mean, not the game, the counter. It wouldn't work. So you have to make sure even like one letter can make a big difference, and um, that's what I want everyone to know. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Thank you for taking the time to listening to this video, and I hope you have a great day.